Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for Behavioral Science 3010, Statistics of the Behavioral Sciences at Utah Valley University. In this video, we're looking at a practice test for Chapter 3 on Central Tendency. This is the first of three, so it's practice test A. Um, there are five questions in it, and here's the first one. The three most common measures of central tendency are, and the choices are nominal, ordinal, and ratio, or inferential, descriptive, and explanatory, or mean, median, and mode, or variance, standard deviation, and IQR. Okay, the answer to this one is C. The mean, the median, and the mode are the three most common uh, measures of central tendency. They are by no means the only ones. There's, there's a very long list, but these um, are the most common. Now, just a word about the other ones. A, nominal, ordinal, and ratio, those are three of the four levels of measurement. Those are common. Uh, B, inferential, descriptive, and explanatory. Uh, those can be the purposes of statistics, an inferential statistic, a descriptive statistic, or an explanatory study. And then D, the variance standard deviation and the IQR, which stands for interquartile range. Those are actually measures of spread or variation. We'll talk about those in the next chapter. Okay, number two. What is the minimum level of measurement needed to calculate the mode? Well, for this one, the choices are nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. <clears throat> the answer is nominal. The mode only needs a category, and nominal is the most basic variable that simply indicates category membership without adding anything else. And you can say which one has the mode by which one is the most frequently occurring. So that is the answer to um, number two. On to number three. What is the median for these data? We got five, one, one, three, and two. The choices are 1, 2.4, 2, or cannot be calculated. Uh, the answer to this one is 2, and let me show you how that one works. It, it, it works best if you rearrange the data first. In fact, you really have to do that. So here I've rearranged it as 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, and when you have an odd number, there's going to be a one number that's right there in the middle. In this case, it's the 2, and that's the median. If there were an even number, there would be two near the middle, and we'd average those. Um, I'll have an example of that for you later. Anyhow, um, that's the median. Okay, number four. Which of these measures is least affected by outliers? And the choices are the mean, the median, the standard deviation, or the geometric mean. The answer to this one is the median, and let's take a look at why that's the case. Here I have two skewed distributions. The top one is positively skewed. The bottom one is negatively skewed, and in both of those you see that the highest point of each one is the mode, and it pretty much stays put because it's it's the highest point. And then you see the median um, is in, is the next one down. On the positively skewed one, the median it moves a little up towards the left, excuse me, towards the right. On the negative one, the median slides down a little towards the left, and then you see that the mean has moved even more. Uh, the mean is the most sensitive of these, and it follows the uh, extreme scores, of the ones that are listed for the answers here, the mean, the median, standard deviation, and the geometric mean, the median is the one that's least affected. The standard deviation is also dramatically influenced by outliers, but that's a measure of variation for the next chapter. The geometric mean is a different kind of mean, but it is also affected by outliers, and really it's just in there as a, as a bogus answer. Anyhow, let's go to the last question. Number five, which measure of central tendency is least efficient? The choices are the mean, the mode, the median, or all are the same. Well, the answer on this one is the mode, and let's um, talk about what we mean here for a moment. Efficiency means the ability to get a, a, uh, an estimate of a population value with a certain level of precision. So say, for instance, you're going to do a survey, and you want to know what voters are looking for, and you want to know it within plus or minus three points. Well, <coughs> an efficient statistic will let you get that level of precision with a smaller number of people, um, as opposed to a less efficient one where you need more. Um, and the mean, as long as you're dealing with a bell curve, the mean is the most efficient. Uh, the median is moderately efficient, but the mode is kind of all over the place because it can bounce around so much depending on the quirks of the data. So of these three, the mode is the least efficient and the mean is the most efficient. And that's it for the first pretest for chapter three.